just come to say hello and let you know I'm here. You know what? It's very nice to have a village, yeah? I always dream, you know, like every of us, yeah? All of us have dream, like we should have a kind of a spiritual village, yeah? Where we can live together and all the people work together and all that would be nice. But uh, I don't know if this kind of idea really is acceptable for this kind of planet or not. It seems difficult. <laughs> There are many uh, different groups have tried eh, also, and uh, sometimes they're successful for a while. Eh? And also depends on where you are. If you're in India, perhaps you are safer. Huh? Because Indian people and Indian country, as uh, usual, as normally they, they are more accustomed to this kind of spiritual group and all kind of uh, spiritual belief and systems. Uh, nobody cares. The Buddhists would go to the Hindu temple and the Hindu would go to Bhagaya and bow to the Buddha and, and etc., etc. And the Muslim would, uh, uh, f- f- you know, go together with the Sikh, whatever. No? Religious uh, atmosphere in India is very, very harmonious compared to other places. And so if any spiritual group, big group, survived uh, almost in India huh? or in Tibet, if there are suddenly so much a uh, vast rush of uh, big positive energy concentrated somewhere, <laughs> then immediately you attract <laughs> even bigger negative energy to come. Because this world is a world of negative energy. Not because the world is negative, it is because of the inhabitants of this planet are so accustomed to negative atmosphere and they generate by their thought, action, expectation, brainwashing, customs, or or habit, they generate a kind of negative feeling, negative atmosphere around them and they expect things negative way. They never believe God can make so much miracle they never dare to ask for anything because they think they ask but they don't get it anyhow. <laughs> so it's just, okay, I pray to you, but I know you won't give it. So it's okay, okay, whatever, you know. <laughs> you know, the faith is not deep enough to change this planet atmosphere into positive energy. Therefore, whatever little positive energy we can create or any sp- real spiritual group can create is sometimes attract more negative obstacles. Huh? Not that like attract like, huh? like people say, but opposite attracts. It has to be. Otherwise, this world is not balanced as it is. Otherwise, this world is not called the earth planet, but would be named perhaps uh, what? Planet X five zero seven seven something like that, huh? <laughs> or heavenly abode, huh? Or more civilized planet. Sooner or later, any every planet, any planet would evolve with the time, and with the spiritual understanding, the planet will evolve. But if we evolve in a material wise and not balanced with the spiritual power, then the world or the planet or that any particular planet will be destroyed in time. And that is what they call the end of the world. Not this world particularly, any world that is created and when it happens to be imbalanced by the outweigh of material advancement versus uh, spiritual development, then disaster occurred. For example, if uh, any planet, after a while, the planet just formed and then uh, they go through uh, evolution from caveman to civilization, uh, etc., etc., and then they develop, develop, until one day they find uh, like atom energy 
thing like that, electronic energy. And then trouble begins. At that time, if such a world, citizens, happen to discover very high energies, uh, some matter, you know, very, very advanced matter, like uh, atom, nothing huh, like that. And then the, if they don't have enough spiritual understanding to control their knowledge of the physics, then trouble begins. Then they will use it for bad things, or accident can happen because not enough intelligence to handle this dangerous but otherwise would be useful matter. So in this world, as you can see, uh, not too many uh, spiritual practitioners as compared to non-spiritual practitioners. I mean, some people say they are Christians or they are Buddhists or maybe other religions, but they may not necessarily practice the true religious doctrine that was supposed to be imparted to them. You, you know what I mean? Ah, ah, when you look around you, you find some examples in plenty. So in this case, uh, if we gather together somewhere for so long a period of time and the energy just keeps building up, building up, building up, then of course something might happen because uh, the negative power is more outweighed the positive at the moment. Even though we are developed and it has already benefited a great deal to the world. But I tell you, even if we practice spiritually, material side, we will also have fulfillment. If only you have faith. God can make anything happen. He makes the whole world. <laughs> the whole universe. Can you imagine? Look around you, how many miracles in front of you. These are all miracles. Can you create one like that? No. Can you create any particle of your body the way it is? And everyone is so unique, even though we all have nose in the middle and eyes on both sides, even two ears as well. <laughs> but we don't look the same. How can that be? Billions of people. Rarely someone looks the same except the twin, you know, or the double. This is rare case. Even then there are something different. Huh? Fingerprints, huh? hair, eyes color, thinking, huh? lifestyle, idea. There's something different all the time. So if uh, we ask for miracles, I think it's a boring subject. <laughs> Miracles happen all around us every day, every second, every minute. Look at your body and see the whole miracle from your, from the head to the toe. So you see the idea of having a village together. Well, I don't think it's impossible, but <laughs> we might spend too much energy for it. You understand? Maybe just well, just stay home and spend that energy to develop ourselves. Uh, go group meditation sometimes and mix with the world. Because that's also the way that we can bring the message into the world. Suppose if we stay together in one place only, maybe it's good for us. Yeah, and somehow it, it, it helps us. We don't have too much temptation. Huh? and we have too much uh, negative uh, influence on us, because I was so true to myself, so I was so convinced. And whatever I say, people must believe me because it's the truth. <laughs> yeah, many years later I found that things are different. So anyhow, we should create a spiritual village wherever we live. I think that's the idea. Mm. We have to attract more, right? Mm. Ah. What I mean is, the idea is to bring heaven into every home, so that every home is a Buddha's land, every home is heaven. It's difficult, I know, but this can be done. Huh? Yes, 
Otherwise, also very nice to stay together, you know, for our sake. It's just so beautiful. But how about your families? You see? Huh? Your friends? Ah, your associates, your boss, your work, they need you. They need you, your spiritual energy. Also, they need your loving presence to understand more about the God within themselves. If you bring that God to me, uh, to our initiate, and stick together, all together, all the God sit there, God number two, God number one, number three. <laughs> How about the society? Yes. If the world has no light at all, it would be dark. Better one light here, one light there, than no light. Better dim light than no light. So we have to light up our surrounding, make a spiritual village with the center is ourselves. We radiate loving energies. We make shining examples. We make a kind of uh, heaven for the people to take refuge in. Eh? Wherever we live, we must create heaven. And that is our spiritual village. So we should not have only one spiritual village concentrated in one spot of the planet, but we have it everywhere. Now, you see, also we have Belgium, Hungary, Austria, Czech, Slovakia, Mexico, Panama, Paraguay, Chile, Costa Rica, Germany, South Africa, Portugal, what, Korea, Chinese, Malaysia, Cambodia, Canada, anywhere, anywhere. You see this? Indonesia, huh? See that? Korea. Thailand, Hong Kong, yes. So we are very rich. Yes, better. Yes. What do we have tried? Huh? We have tried the alternative. Huh? So we also know what it is like to stay together in one place and work together. It's also fine. You have to be the center of the light in the society where you live where you work, where you have your root. Huh. You have to develop from there. You have to branch yourself everywhere like a big, 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 big tree. So people will take refuge. Huh? Everyone must become a Supreme Master. Everyone must return to your position as a Supreme Master, as a Buddha, as a son and daughter of God. There's no need to take refuge anywhere but inside yourself, because you are God. Didn't the Bible tell you that? Yes. God made man in his own image. Yeah? Remember? At least we are the children of God. We must walk like God. We must act like that, like the prince of the universe. No need to take refuge anywhere. No need to run around to any spiritual village or do anything special, go to Himalaya or nothing. Because you are God wherever you are. Yeah? Remember? Don't be weak. Mm. It's okay to have a teacher, no? Okay, to adore a teacher. It's okay to have somebody, you know, so that you can maybe have an example. But you have to spread. You know, like take a root here, but the root must spread everywhere in order to sustain the whole big tree. And the tree must branch itself, itself, big shade, so it protect a lot of beings. In the Buddhist story, there is a, a, a Buddhist a scripture, there is a story about the tree, the ban, banyan tree, bodhi tree, very big. The 500 monks could take refuge underneath of its shade and to practice meditation. In the old time, they don't have tent like we did, like we do. Huh? And they don't build houses, a big building like this, no aircon. Mm. Just take refuge under the trees, and that's how they can practice. And there was very famous, the master called uh, Long Shu, Bodhisattva, Long Shu Master. Long Shu means the Banya tree master, huh? because he, he always stay under the tree. And five hundred disciples stay together there. Would you like to stay under the tree like that? In West Virginia? 
Christmas time. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. When the snow is higher than your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's be practical. Now, you see, in India, it's, it's well, more convenient because the weather there is warm. And the people's need are very, very little. They live almost basically uh, close to nature, and their needs are few. They have no comparison to think. Uh, they don't have a neighbors to look up on, like a richer or something like that. Most, almost are the same. Even the rich in India are not that. <laughs> they don't look so glamorous like in America or elsewhere. When I was in India, I knew a few doctors, physicians, but their house are bare, really bare necessity. Their clinic, so-called clinic, you came in and you see one bench, wooden bench, or two benches perhaps, and then in the evening they put wood, uh, how's that, plywood? They put on top a uh, wood sheet, huh? thick, huh? and then thick like this on top, and then they sleep on it. Become a bed. Yeah, and the clinics like that. And there's only one kind of cabinet. Uh, inside there are a few aspirin or something that I could even handle myself. <laughs> Help yourself, clinic. <laughs> and they don't earn that much money either, because most of the patients are poor. And some other doctors, I know one family, the wife is a doctor, a doctor, and the husband is a lawyer. But their house are also barely anything compared to your house. Understand? So even uh, if uh, the rich in India don't make other poor people too envious, <laughs> so their life a little bit, uh, you know, very contented with whatever they have. Hmm? So if they have a spiritual village together, they also have bare necessities, very simple living. Also climate, hot, they don't need anything. All they need is uh, some chapatis to eat, and then they meditate, and they drink water from the river, or they dig the wells, live together, and they plant rice. Some spiritual communities in India, they plant their own food because they believe that the food outside is so contaminated. So they rather plant their own wheat, rice, uh, fruit, and this is fun. It's sound very romantic, you know. But I don't know <laughs> if you, as the householders, used to with uh, luxuries, like in American standard, would be able to last there very long. Some of you can, but not all of you. So the idea of spiritual village, I think, oh, we better just leave it for a while. Huh? If it comes, it comes. Huh? Actually, I did not start in Taiwan, even in the first place, to have a spiritual village at all. I didn't have any village, to tell you the truth. When I first started, I don't even have a house. I stay in a disciple's house. But that was afterward, after a long time. First, I, when I first came, I just, I just stay in a temple, like every other nuns or temple worker. Huh? I clean the bathroom, clean the floor, for the people to come in and worship the Buddha. And that's it. And then afterward, I don't know how I became famous, I forgot. Somebody dig me out. Yeah, somehow. God, yeah, he play <laughs> some game. And then so after a few times, and I have some students, and then when I came, when I came down, I stay in their house. But moving, you know, sometimes stay in this house, sometimes stay in another house. And then later, so many people follow me, like you want to do now. Huh? Like the sister from uh, South Africa want to follow me, and I just follow. And some of them has no obligation with the family, huh? like their bachelor, or they don't have husband, or they don't have wife, or their parents say, "Okay, go where you want." Huh? You grown up. Some parents are very easy and understanding. Wherever huh? I stay, they stay. So after I have a few disciple, like uh, maybe at that time I was wearing a monk's robe. Huh? So very easy for people to follow me, they just want to become monks and nuns too. And that is very uh, simple in, uh, in, the, in the Taiwan or in Thailand, you understand? To, to be a nun monk there is very common practice, <laughs> to stick to me. 
And so what do I do? At that time I just knew. Huh? I thought everybody same like me. It's okay if they want to be nuns, okay with me. No problem. Why not? And then we rented a house because at that time I have so many people <laughs> cannot stay in one room in a disciples' house anymore. So we rented a small room. And then we work, you know, hand work or something together to pay the rent and sustain ourselves. It was in the beginning. And then later they sold the house. So we became homeless. <laughs> we left home again. <laughs> uh, then we wandering around. Uh, with, uh, then we camp next to the riverside. Then we buy some tent. Uh, and then at that time, I, we, we did not uh, earn so much money. We didn't think about money. <laughs> Just as things develop, you know what I mean? Because more people come, then I have to earn more money and pay rent, things like that, because I don't, I don't take a donation for personal use. Huh? Even in, from the beginning already. Yeah. So more people, then we have to kind of organize and make more work, and then so... And then we buy a tent, and at that time, one tent, four person, more people join me, and then we have to buy more tent. But in the beginning, we don't have that much money, and we don't take donation even ten. So we buy a tent for four person. And some person long, and some short, you know. <laughs> when he sleeps, his toes stick out. <laughs> Mosquito visit him every time. The same toes. <laughs> So later I say, okay, never mind, we buy some more tent now. If we have more money, we buy some more tent. So the long person can sleep, you know, square-wise, <laughs> corner to corner. <laughs> the long person stick together and then sleep, you know, like this, cross. Huh? So his toe is protected. That was that. And then uh, later on we, we can buy a piece of land. It was uh, very cheap in the beginning. The Taiwanese people say, Nèo bu sân tan means the bird don't even lay their eggs there. <laughs> it's such a desolated place, that's what I mean, you know. Even birds don't come and lay their eggs there. That means a very bad place. Nah, no survival chance, because no water, very dry, no water. And there's nothing around there. The, the, the soil is, is not fertile, nah? it's a kind of very a sticky soil which people use it to make bricks, you know. It's very special clay, huh? very sticky. So you can't plant so much thing there. And you have to really work hard to make the land loose. Huh? Yes, yes. Then you can plant something, but it's not so much. So not too many people stay around there, and not many people buy land. And then we came and buy some. It was so cheap. And then we settled there, and because at that time I have so many monks and nuns, hang around me already. And we, I need a place for them. They just hang around the river all the time. And also, that uh, during that time, we have a lot of uh, other people, né? like so-called lay followers, come to us. So um, yeah, we have the place, because it's convenient also, the place is cheap, and then we buy it. And then they all come, and then it develop until, and then we bought more and more within the, with the years. Then it became Meoli. All right. But anyhow, together one, in one place is not always very convenient. It's very good, but we have to struggle. But it's good for the disciples, good for uh, the, the international community when they want to come to, to see me or when I, we have a retreat. Uh, if they, they have a sentiment, you know, they think, oh, Master, stay there, that's her place. You know, holy ground. You know, so when uh, so when uh, when we had uh, Meoli, huh? Everybody happy, huh? Remember, huh? When you went there, you feel good, huh? Right? This is true also because the the, the spiritual atmosphere built up with the years, and you like it. When you go there, you feel home. Feel like at home. But I think uh, even if we don't have Meoli or we don't have uh, any other places, it don't matter, huh? Because heaven is within you. Do you understand now? Yeah? Yeah, maybe God wants it that way. Yeah. Maybe God wants it that way. Huh? Like I said, wow, that's beautiful things that we bought. We, we have uh, built with our hands. It was the most beautiful place in Taiwan. Yeah, we made it so beautiful. You haven't seen beside, you know, behind. 
some of the foreigners don't go to behind the mountain because we spoil you. We, we let you put the tents in the front, in the front garden, huh? where it's more convenient for you. Back mountain, one, two kilometers away. You have to walk back and forth, and we worry you're tired after a long journey. So many of you don't know the caves that we made by hand ourselves. It's beautiful. We dig out the mountain, huh? the mountain like this, because we want to protect the landscape. Huh? The mountain were well, very difficult. The back mountain, the two shape. One is a little bit flat and a little bit slop, sloppy like this, but the other one is so slanted like this. You know, but when we dig cave into the mountain, wow, you look down, they are so beautiful, it's out of this world. Really, Himalaya caves are not as beautiful. In the way structure, you know, so beautiful, because we wanted to also protect the landscape and the environment so we don't destroy the mountain the shape, we keep it. So we just dig into the mountain and then build it inside. Very beautiful, very beautiful. You have, if you have the chance to go, go and have a look. I make a tour guide, and while I guide you on the tour, I can also blah blah on spiritual issue. (laughs) Well, the difference is the name. I'm a tour guide too. I'm a spiritual tour guide. I will guide you back to heaven. How about that? Free. <laughs> Not that there is a place somewhere called heaven, but we must remember the heaven within us. And I just remind you, I have the way to do it. And because of me reminding you, you have found your own heaven. So that is the truth. Mm. Yeah, that's a beautiful place. Even though I know God can do anything, but just let it be. God can do anything, but God doesn't do it. Because we have to do it. God is not there to do everything for us if we don't want to do it ourselves. We have to ask for it, we have to want it, we have to create our world. We have to take matter into our hands. We have to realize the godness within us, the powerful energy that we possess. We have to develop that. We have to remember it. We have to make use of it. We have to walk like a god on earth. Then and there, we realize that God is us. Otherwise, God can do everything. <laughs> of course, otherwise he's no God. But what for should God does everything? God already does. Create the whole universe for us. Create everything. Now we are in it. It's up to us to make use of ourselves, to make whatever we want to become by our own power of faith, of no knowledge, of self-knowledge, of self-realization. Otherwise, God is no use, I tell you the truth. God has already done his job. The poor man needs a rest. <laughs> ah, he cannot. <laughs> ah, he needs a rest. Yeah. A vacation. Actually, if God does everything and asks, then what for? What for are we here? How can we realize how powerful we are? You understand? Huh? Mm. So it's up to us to make a God out of ourselves or to make anything else you want. The decision is yours. But to hear it, it is, it's nice, but you have to make use of it, huh? My God, it's so difficult to become God, huh? <laughs> yeah, why not? Would you rather be something else, huh? If already everyone declare, every Bible, every scripture, every religion declare that you are the Son of God. Now, what, what, what do you want to be? Why you deny it? It is because of the mind, the brain. The social custom make us think that we are low, we are weak. Can't even believe that God will bless us with everything. As anything, you have it, but you dare not. Most people dare not dream that the God will give you this, give you that. Why not? That's what the old guy is there for. But many people don't, don't, don't ask him, so he just huh, take holidays. Christmas, for example. 
God is within you, God is yourself. Every lecture boils down to the same topic. That's the only thing you must do. Remember yourself, remember you're powerful, remember you can create anything you want with the power of your faith, with the power of your self-realization. But sometimes, because we are so used to with the less, you know, we are not there to believe that we can have this and that and other. That's fine, that's fine. We also don't need to have so much. We also don't need to be a millionaire, be rich or anything like that, but it's possible. It's possible even with spiritual knowledge to be anything you want, to have anything you want, provided you want it enough, provided you really want it and know that you get it. Most of the time you say, okay, I don't think I get it anyhow. But I just ask him, but <laughs> I don't think he get it. That's what prevents us from having what we want, because we already expected that the guy would not give us that's also okay. If you have enough to eat, fine. If you have enough clothes to wear, it's okay. No need to want too much, also fine. But it's not impossible, I just want to tell you. So many people already prove it to you. By the power of the mind alone, they can move objects, they can walk on fire, they can walk on water, they can pierce knife through their face from ears to ear, and nothing happened. Not even one drop of blood come out even with the power of the mind alone, astral power, you can do that. They say that America is the land of opportunities. Maybe it's true, because the American people, they have strong will. They believe they can do. They demand all the time, better, better, better. They do not hesitate or feel shy to ask anyone or even God to fulfill their dream. That's the way we should do it. So. Do not try to run away from home or take a refuge in a, somewhere else, and not even take refuge in Master. Master is you. You have the Master inside. What's the difference between us? Maybe your IQ even higher than me. Who knows? There was a film in America, American film with, uh, with what? With what? With John Travolta. No? I don't know the title. But the film describes a man with the power of moving object, also the power of knowing some event that is happen, happening from faraway places and then can uh, predict something or can read other people's message huh? through the air. Mm. And many people don't believe it. Even they saw it, they don't believe it. They don't believe it's just a concentration of the mind. And they want to operate his brain <laughs> in order to find what's the difference to, for scientific research, in order to find out what's the difference in his brain between him and someone else, the ordinary, so-called ordinary people. There is no difference. They can operate until all the nerves cut into thousands of uh, billions of pieces. They will find no difference. There is a slight difference between human and human, anyhow, but there is no difference as such if you concentrate your mind. It's just the power of concentration. If you operate the physical brain, there's not much difference. Huh? So it's even dangerous <laughs> to be talented, to boast your power of psychic. Huh? Remember, that's why I tell you, not to talk to people about your achievements. Many scientists, they believe only the things that they can touch and can prove. So sometimes genius is difficult to survive in this world. So many genius has come and gone unnoticed, unrecognized, and even harmed by societies just because they are so ignorant. They do not know what the genius know. So they do not believe. When they seek to harm him, harm her, or sometimes they seek to prove it materially to the extent of hurting that genius, or that talented, or that spiritual being. But I remember uh, America has a very uh, famous psychic, um, Edgar Case. Is that right? You know him? You know the name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people don't believe that he has the concentration power to leave his body and uh, the body just been left behind and he moves himself. 
you know, I mean, astrally or spiritually out of his body and go search for some sickness in some people's person of, in the body or search something else somewhere else. So they try to experience, stick needles into his fingernails. You know that? Do you know that or not? Well, read his books. Even I know. <laughs> I stick fingers in his nails just to make sure that he really doesn't feel anything. My God, he did not feel at that time, but when he woke up, he did feel. Poor guy. So that's how the society treat a genius or an extraordinary person sometimes. It's not Jesus' time only, okay? Or every time is human time. And humans, they do weird things sometimes. Has no, no surprise. Actually, according to some of the research and my thinking, my opinion, my guess, guessing, is that we have a lot of advanced technologies, advanced medicine, advanced ways to end the suffering in this world right now, even at this minute. There's no need to have hunger, no need to have suffering, no need to have disease, incurable disease anymore. We are already so advanced. We have found many substances to combat even the most deadly disease. But sometimes the society as a whole choose not to do it, just to protect the economy. So it's not that God don't give us everything. It's not that God could not do the impossible things. It's us, it's we, who are the obstacles, because our faith sometimes is so thin. We could not believe that. If God give us a mean to cure the disease, then He would give us another mean to su sustain the medical working system and don't let it go bankrupt. If God give us a, gives us a mean to find free energy, free electric, then God would give us another mean to sustain the whole industry and don't let people go without work. Then we will find other work somehow, we will find other things to do. Or we should live a sim more simple life with little want, and we don't have to struggle so much for work, for earning money, for example then there are many genius who can prove to us that it is workable, that this world can become paradise even materially in one instant. But so it must be that the faith of the people of this world are so little, so thin, that they are so afraid, so afraid to take any chance, that if, for example, if uh, all the sick people cured, you know, <laughs> so easily, then what becomes of the healthcare system, for example? Not to talk about real medicine, real miracle cure for the people. You know, I say what I believe, eh? but you don't have to believe what I believe. You can believe it or you don't believe it, it's up to you, or you can do research on my suggestion, my comment, and then find out yourself whether what I say is the truth or not. Huh? I mean, you have option, eh? right? You can choose. But at least uh, I tell you something, then you can have a chance to prove it, whether it's correct or not. If I don't tell you, you might not even know that it exists. Uh, you don't even have a chance to prove your IQ. <laughs> so do, do some research yourself. So you see, don't ever blame God again in your prayer or in any second of your life that God makes so much misery, God don't give us medicine, God don't give us enough food, God don't give us this and that and all that. God gives everything already, long time ago. But many people sometimes stop this blessing. Maybe it's the planet, collective karma, that help the obstacle to materialize. Yeah? So we cannot also blame that one person or this person or the whole constitution somehow, we have to look through human history. Maybe we have done so many bad things. But actually, so what? God is always forgiving. If it's not 
For giving, he is not God. For him, there is no bad, no good, no evil, nothing. Only the children who is learning, who is making mistakes, who is learning by mistakes, who is trying to remake himself into a real God by different experimentation. Some people success. Some people succeed in making himself a God in a few lifetimes, or remembering himself as a God, or choose the right way. And some people tumble along the way and take longer time. But they are all in the process of making, remembering a God out of himself, of themselves. Sooner or later, we all realize it. But I just want to tell you this, to let you know that nothing is impossible with God. Even to make this world into a paradise is not impossible. It's just because of mankind, the habit, our habit, to be so negative, to think negative, to expect negative, and have no courage to hope for anything big. And the faith in God is very weak. So we're always afraid that uh, if this happens, we lose our job. If free electric comes, we lose our electric company, a free medicine come, a good medicine come, a doctor went out of business, or medical care, I have no work to do, etc., etc., it never happens. If we have another way to do, right? If we, uh, God will find another way for us. Besides, if we don't have to pay so much for electric bill, <laughs> then we don't have to work so hard in the beginning, right? Anyhow, for example, like that. There's so many things, so many uh, inventions, so many research has been successful. And we could have paradise any minute we want, if only we want. But sometimes we choose to live in misery. That's fine with God. But don't blame the poor old guy. That's all. Because this is injustice, it's unfair. You always send some genius, always send teacher, always send good friends to remind us of the glory of heaven and to help ourselves, to heal ourselves, to be rich, to be famous, to be beautiful, to be, you know, abundance in everything, to have abundance of everything, to be wherever we like to be. Not that we want to be famous, not that we want to be rich, but this is the way we should be, we could be, just that the society as a whole, like a big constitution, has its own law, unwritten law, unwritten agreement. <laughs> they make every obstacle as possible for every other souls. Even the developed souls have to struggle through this institution. So it's difficult for us. Huh? You are on your way, I think. You are happy and you know. And that's the secret between us. We all understand already inside. Huh? So this is just the communication, so that I sit here and let you look at me. Huh? <laughs> Love me. I don't give you anything. I just tell you what you have, what you have forgotten. Huh? No problem, I don't give you anything at all, never. But you have everything already, everything inside. You don't know. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> Just because I love you, I cannot not come. I promise you to come. I see you later. Go eat. Have a happy meal. How are you guys? <laughs> but anyhow, I just wanted to tell you, here and uh, downstairs people, other other initiates, that you're really good, you're really good, you're really disciplined, I'm very proud of you. Because you have family, 
That makes a difference. When you have family, it's sweet, mm. it's cozy, and it's busy, and it's all right. <laughs> Anyhow, now I understand the pressure. The spiritual power is so strong. As soon as you have spiritual power, you have responsibility. You must share it. And the people hear you, the people encounter you, uh, the people who pray to you, or the people who love you, they are entitled automatically to share the wealth of your spiritual power. And that put pressure on you. Automatically they look up on you for guidance. Invisibly also, without you even knowing, and without them even knowing. Anyone contact you, connect with you, share the spiritual heritage. And they evolved by the way. And you have to share their burden as well. There's no no one way traffic, huh? And you give the good, if you want to give what they have, huh? they give the bad too. <laughs> so see, just like, just like you go to the supermarket, huh? you buy loads of things, vegetarian, <laughs> uh, cabbage, carrot, ginseng, tea, everything, sometimes costly things, like car, house, everything, carpet. And then what did you give to them? A few pieces of paper, understand? Yeah. So the value in the universe, it's not always equal. It's not always uh, what we think or what we expect. No, same thing. The spiritual uh, wealth uh, merchandise <laughs> are also sold at different price. What you sold and what, what you sell and what you get paid are different, different quality. But that's the way it is. You, people cannot scold you for giving you just a few pieces of paper. Uh, because that's the way it's arranged. Everybody agree upon it. And it's the way it works, it's the law. It's accepted. See? Similarly, spiritual power also can be shared, can be sold, can be exchanged, but in different ways. And this is accepted in the universal law. Nothing we can do about it. Rarely you can go to the supermarket and change your few carrots for, for their cabbage. They don't accept it anymore even though the value may be even more, or at least equal. But your carrot will not be accepted in the mall for another cabbage or strawberry jam, whatever, even if the value is the same. You have to bring this useless, worthless, thin, good-for-nothing pieces of paper, <laughs> and they're happy. My see people's eyes when they see this piece of paper. You find that they give the best thing of their harvest, the best of their labor, just to get a few pieces of paper, and they're so happy. Well, that's the way it is. See that? So anyhow, along with spiritual blessing and heritage, we also do have responsibility. And by the way, these new rings. <laughs> <laughs> you design some of the earrings and some of the rings, very small, yeah? I design, first of all, some people like it. Eh? I have to design up to my standard, the way I like it, for my artistic satisfaction, not necessarily for money. So, and anyhow, I design some new ones. I tell you what, all oh, sometimes, just for fun. Eh? So we have to look beyond the immediate, go above the future even. Oh, we don't have to even, we don't have to. It becomes effortless now. Oh, we look at uh, everything so light and humorous. Eh? Therefore, people, when people they predicted us something, they predict you are wrong. They predicted the way of the world is all wrong. Uh, we are only happy to have the opportunity to serve, hmm? to share what we have. Because like this is slow, it's not stagnant. Like water in the tank, if it keeps for itself, later it becomes rotten. The water rotten and the tank becomes rotten too. No use for the tank, no uh, use for anybody. Money is there only to flow, eh? to be used, to be helpful in different ways. Yeah, it's not for us to just keep there and <laughs> do nothing when necessary, eh? according to our means and according to the uh, necessity and the importance of that event. Because sometimes we have one person, but that person affects the whole country or the whole world, and that person is important. So not, not that you always have to help a lot of people, in order to be righteous or to be, to be uh, reasonable. You sometimes have one person or two persons, it depends. 
and that person help the whole world. Now if you have Jesus, but you have Buddha, <laughs> huh? what do you think? It's not to have him personally. It's to have the ideal, the noble heritage, the spiritual awakening of mankind. If that person is alive, is comfortable, is supported, is helped, is understood, is protected, for example. Because these species are rare. Even though we are all Buddhas, but not everyone realizes that he is a Buddha. That's the difference. Even though we are all children of God, but not everyone realizes that he is the Son of God, the way Jesus did, for example. Huh? So these people, you cannot count one. Because righteous people, selfless people, it's rare. If we find one, we must help. If really we believe that he's good, she's good, we must do it. We must stand up for our belief. Otherwise, oh, what part do we, do we practice? Okay, anyhow, folks, sorry I'm late. The contact person kept me. <laughs> because I was talking about the secret of how to make money and they want to hear all the time. I said, we have to go down and share with all the people. Because we all want to make money, don't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyhow, the secret of having money is not how much you earn, but how much you save and how much you spend. Many people always spend, spend unnecessary. And uh, in the items that you pay, you could pay less for the same quality. Huh? You have to shop. And you don't have to shop around too much. But sometimes if you happen to see something that is good and a reasonable price, price or cheap price, you can buy them. And if you don't see them, then forget it. You don't miss anything. Huh? When you go to retreat, like for example in Cambodia last time or in, uh, in Taiwan, you had nothing with you. But you didn't die, did you? You live and how well? No telephone. Uh, no car, <laughs> walking, running, and you still live, and you eat simple food, no telephone, no husband, no kids, nothing. You're okay, you're all right. Huh? And you wear simple clothes, no problem. Huh? Very simple, you, you are alive. Huh? Similarly, in, in our situation, in our house, we can also have simple things. Don't, don't, don't mean you don't have anything. But there are many things, the values are the same, but the price are different. You know the difference between shops, don't you? Yes. So, you don't have to always spend a lot of money in order to look good, or in order to your house to look uh, special. It can look special, but not expensive. So, all the millionaires, sometimes they don't look like one. The rich people, they don't look like one. They don't always uh, drive in a limousine or Rolls Royce or, you know, Cadillac. Yeah? They normally drive ordinary car because they don't need to show off. They feel well within themselves that they have security for themselves and their families, yeah? To last for years to come, for emergency, for anything they need, should the need arise. And meanwhile, they still continue to generate money out of their saving income. So they feel well, they don't need to show off, they don't need anybody to know that they are rich. So they just wear casual clothes sometimes, yeah? And then shopping in a very ordinary shop. And their house also comfortable but ordinary. Their furniture are not always antique or anything extraordinary, just comfortable, cozy, enough for them to feel well. So the secret of making money and being rich is not how much you earn, it's how you manage your money. Many people, even rich, unfortunately after the second generation, yeah, like the father are very uh, how's it, diligent, make the money and save it. But after the children or grandchildren, they have no ambition to, to do the same. They, they don't learn it through the hard way, so they don't value the money. So if they are left with the big inheritance, very soon they squander it, and they are left with nothing, often like this, because they, they do not know how to save. They think the parents are very rich, they can spend and spend and spend, and it would never, it never uh, finish the money, but it will finish. It will finish. In the Vietnamese uh, idiom, they say, even if, if you eat the mouth, if you sit there and don't do nothing and eat, then the mountain, you can even eat the mountain. <laughs> 
<laughs> flat. Huh? Similarly, truly, why why we can help so many people? It seems like I have a lot of money, but because I save. Not that I consciously save, but I just know a logical way to to you know just just to keep the money. Because if you earn a lot, but you spend a lot, then it amounts to nothing. You just you, you just keep other people's rich. You know, you keep the furniture sellers rich, <laughs> you keep the uh, car company rich, you keep every other, you know, shopkeeper rich, but not yourself. You have to watch how you spend. Maybe you have to make a budget of your own, how much you spend every month, and don't go over that, thing like that, huh? Many rich people, not only they uh, look ordinary in, di- in many ways, but they know how to save. Uh, for example, when a toothpaste nearly finished, they don't just throw away in a half, but they squeeze it. They use some uh, knife or something to flatten it. Uh, you do it also, sure. But the rich people, they teach their children to do that. Maybe you you don't know how they earn money, but at least you know how they save money. And the saved money is the earned as well. Eh? Whatever you save is what you earn too. Is that not so? And in turn, that money will breed more interest. Huh? And then make more money for you. Even if you don't do anything, you put money in the bank, it earns interest for you. And then you can live on that too. So whatever you save is yours. Whatever you spend is somebody else's. And uh, every time we go to the retreat or something like that, it's not only that you want to see me or you want to uh, have a spiritual practice, but also it's a um, very natural opportunity for you to put down everything, né? to be free of material bondage, to be free of the preconceived ideas and notions that we need this, we need that, we need everything in order to survive. It has been proved that even if you go on like this, you survive. In the old time when I don't have many of you, we live with bare necessity. I have a tent, they have a tent, each one have a tent, the same. My tent sometimes smaller than their tent because I'm smaller. <laughs> we give tent according to size. <laughs> and my size is MS. <laughs> That's why they say SM. <laughs> Small size. <laughs> And then uh, each one of us, including myself, would have a sleeping bag and uh, a, a thin and warm blanket, not wool, just warm blanket inside, in case it's a cold time. And if it's too cold, you, can, uh, you are entitled to have another sleeping bag. You ride and then you get one, for example, like that. And so we each live in a tent like that. Huh? Very simple and we didn't have much. We just eat, you know, enough. And now, even if I have a lot of things, and sometimes I have house or I have a cave or whatever, more f- furnished, yeah? but then uh, nothing more happened. I am still the same. I stay the same like before. I think the same. I live the same. I eat the same, you know, almost. There's not much different whether I have more material possession or I have less. I live through the poorest and the richest. Nothing. Change. When I was in the Himalaya in India, I don't have much money. I have to stretch my money very long, because I don't know how long I will stay there. Sometimes I just eat chapati and peanut butter. And chapati I made myself too. It's even cheaper than, than buying it. It's very simple. You have a plate, you know, which you use to eat, huh? and then you just have flour, wheat flour, huh? that you can buy anywhere. And then you knead them in the water, put a pinch of salt in it, knead it the way you knead the bread or pastry, but without yeast. Huh? And then you flatten it with your hand. You don't even need a roller coaster, nothing. <laughs> Just your hand, flatten it. And you put on top of the fire which you collect the wood yeah, from the forest. Yeah? And then just cook it. After a while you turn it on the other side. And then you put the peanut butter on top and then you're on top of the world. <laughs> you're good. And then the water you can drink from the spring 
or from the Ganges water, no problem. I lived through like that many, many months. Sometimes eat only raw food. If they go too high, you know, on a high altitude, the, 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 the air is too thin or I don't know. Can't cook. You can, but it takes half a day to boil a little <laughs> two centimeters of water. I said, forget it. I drink it cold. <laughs> you can't boil a cabbage if you don't have a high power gas, you know. If you have, you can. But if you just collect wood, it's most of the time already damp from the snow. Because the mountains in the Himalaya are non-stop cover, always covered with snow, even in summer, just less, less. And the army would dig a road between the mountains so we can walk between the two mountains of ice. But the ice is always there, even in summer, because they have only two seasons, snow in season and non-snow in season. So the pilgrims normally go on the non-snowing season. And if you happen to stay there too long, then you just snow under, stay there until next year, if you're still alive. And then you drink snow or whatever. Some people do that. It's okay. Even in winter, you can pick some of the, uh, the herbs, eh? some of the wild plants in the Himalaya and can eat them. Some of them look like, taste like, uh, don't look so much like, but taste like uh, spinach. Yeah, like the spinach in America, except that they are a little bit red with the stem, not not green. Taste exactly the same. Hey, don't don't go there and eat nonsense. Huh? I tell you, you have to know which plant to eat. Okay, <laughs> I don't say the master Ching Hai say that and just taste everything whether it looks like it tastes like spinach or not. Before you know it, you're already finished. <laughs> don't make yourself become a laboratory. Hmm? As you know, I don't even have a tent. Can you imagine in the Himalaya, no tent? But sometimes you find a, a roof huh? <laughs> and a so-called house, but the house is, is not really a house the way it is here. Because that kind of house, you can see the stars through the roof, and you can see it through the wall. <laughs> and the wind is very free to visit you any time of the day and night, bringing in the snow as well very generous. So, <laughs> and the floor is very wet. It's not cemented. Because in the Himalaya, people just put the wood together and put very simple thatch hood, you know, grass hood. There's no facility, no, no, no cut. You lay on the floor. So I was very clever, you know. I use a very thin mattress, thinner than yours, not this kind. It's a thin, like, plastic sheet, but the two sides, one side golden, one side silver. And uh, you can use that too. And you, when you fold it, it's, it's like a piece of uh, paper tissue only, so thin. I can't afford to carry so many things. I, I could hardly carry myself. <laughs> when you go, the higher you go, the heavier it becomes. The same luggage became heavier. Even your feet became heavier. It gets swollen with the snow, it's soaked into your shoes. I don't care what kind of shoes you have. The snow can manage to get in. And soak your feet, you know, like the way you soak bread in water, it becomes double the size. <laughs> and then it becomes heavy. Even your feet became heavy, not to talk about anything. So if you go to Himalaya, can't carry many things. So many months like this, I go from one place to another, I also survive. So I just tell you, we live through anything, we can survive. Because if our spirit is strong, we have a noble purpose and a higher ideal. We, we can just look into that ideal and we forget everything else, truly like that. So I, I told you from my experience is that whatever I have or not have <laughs> is no problem. You're still happy and you manage your life accordingly. <laughs> when I wasn't having too much material possession, life is also so fun all the time. Because I have to think how to survive. Every day I have to invent some new ways to, to enjoy. And I'm always surprised, always new, always very happy, and always contented. Because every day you are a master of yourself, a master of your own situation, and you just, just feel good, feel so confident about your ability to survive. Truly, 
If there is a comparison to tell you, if there is truly a necessity to compare, then I must tell you that when I was having nothing, I had more fun because I'm more creative. Now I, I can have everything I want because it's already settled down. I don't have to run around the world and I can have a fixed place sometimes, at least for a few months or a few weeks. And then things are too organized, too many disciples, they buy all kinds of things. <sighs> I'm also busy now. <laughs> also have to be creative, like which one to throw away, <laughs> you know. But it's more, it's more annoying than when I was having nothing and master my own life and uh, decide everything for myself and control the situation. It's not much of the controlling, but every day you know what is what. Before, to have not is easier. Uh, before, when I don't have everything, I was very happy, more happy, you know, because I, I buy what I want and I know my money go where, and I'm happy when I can save something, you know. I feel, I, I feel I'm creative. Yeah, not because of the money, but the value of my intelligence, that I can save that, that I can live with such a small thing and make it so nice. <laughs> when I say I, I mean you, nah? all of us, whenever we can buy some, some good things nah? with a very low price and other places a higher price, and it happened that that things we like so much, the color, the taste, the style we like, then we are very happy. Not because of the money only, right? But just lucky, you know, we're happy, we, we, we're creative and we are resourceful. And that's what we're happy about. It's better you live your normal life, control your destiny. <laughs> when I'm alone, I'm the most happy person. Even you don't give me anything, I'm happy. I can cook for myself, I can wash my clothes, iron my clothes and make my house beautiful and clean. But I can't always do this now due to the demand of the world. So I regret to tell you that to have everything is not always as good as you think. On the contrary, if you don't have enough things or you have just barely enough, that's the best. Then your IQ will become higher because every day you have to think. Uh, how I can save some money, uh, where I go for shopping better, and what kind of food I cook today, which is nutritious, good, tasty, and also economical. And then you're very happy with yourself. Everything creative brings happiness to man, eh? because it's new, it's exciting, it's interesting. If every day the same and people serve you all the time, you feel bored after a while, I guarantee, money back guarantee. Eh? <laughs> Okay, anyhow, that's the end to how to be rich, how to be, <laughs> how to keep your money, huh? Yeah, you take care and then you will know the difference. Thank you so much.